This is the Syntact, Electron's newest drum machine slash synth slash groove box. No samples, everything is synthesized. My questions are, what does it have to offer as a drum machine specifically? Is it a no-brainer? Or are there any reservations? What should you know before buying one? And is the sequencer powerful enough for an Aphex Twin song? Let's find out. I bought this with my own money, so here's my unbiased and honest review. Hello everyone, this is... The Syntact has the same form factor and great build quality as the Digitact and Digitone. Sturdy and heavy metal casing. Smooth high resolution encoders. Although they wiggle more than the ones on my Digitact. Very satisfying clicky buttons. Some people think the buttons are too loud, but I love them. They have a really good tactile response. And I'm very glad Electron didn't put any pressure sensitive pads on this machine, because honestly, I've been very disappointed with Electron's pads in the past. On the model samples, model cycles, and even the much more expensive Analog Rhythm Mark II, I personally found the pads to be unusable. They're not very sensitive, and you have to use a lot of force, which makes my fingers hurt, so I always turn off the velocity sensitivity anyway. We have 16 steps for programming and navigating patterns. Transport controls, Buttons for navigating the menus. Lots of buttons to bring up menus and track parameters. Some of them even with multiple pages. And eight multi-purpose encoders that allow you to change the parameters you see on screen. I know this is definitely not one knob per function, but the menu diving is absolutely tolerable and navigating the parameter pages becomes second nature really fast. This USB B-Type connector gives you class-compliant audio and MIDI over USB. With the Electron Transfer app, you can upload firmware updates and manage or backup your projects and sounds. Electron's Overbridge VST plugin doubles as an editor and allows you to stream all individual tracks to your DAW while still using your regular audio interface driver, which is very nice. Here's your usual MIDI in, out and through, as well as balanced quarter-inch stereo outputs and a headphone out. In addition to that, there's a pair of balanced stereo inputs. More on those later. The Syntact has 12 tracks, 8 digital tracks, and 4 analog tracks. Each of these tracks can house a so-called machine, a sound generator, which is a concept you might know from Electron's model cycles or analog rhythm. For instance, on the 8 digital tracks, you can select any of these digital machines. The first three analog tracks each have analog machines like kicks, snares, and rim shots. The fourth and last analog track is different though. Here you'll find only metallic sounds like cymbals, rides, hi-hats and cowbells. So, instead of having the same almighty synth engine with dozens of parameters on every track, you get a choice of smaller specialized machines that are tailored for different kinds of sounds. These instantly get you there most of the way but they still leave a lot of room to experiment and shape your sound with up to 8 parameters each. You can then further refine these basic sounds with a multi-mode filter, which is analog on the analog tracks and digital on the digital tracks. An ADSR or AHD envelope and two LFOs per track. The digital tracks also have this bass width filter that allows you to low pass and high pass at the same time. Incredibly useful. I wonder why Electron didn't put these on the analog tracks as well. Let's hope they add them in a future firmware update. Some of the machines really only become useful after you refine their sounds. For instance, you can take an impulse machine, hit it with a high pass filter, Turn up the resonance and you get a nice clavis sound. Just add reverb to taste. There are probably also some congas or bongos in here. In the same way, you could use the noise machine to make a shaker sound. Your sound creations can then be saved as presets. 
To give you a feeling for what's possible, we'll show you a diverse selection of drum patterns. This way, you can hear the sounds in context, but we'll also fire off the individual sounds before starting a pattern. While there are synth machines in here, we will focus on percussive drum sounds. Copy Shop by Romano Egypt, Egypt by the Egyptian Lover Oxygen Part 4 by Jean-Michel Jarre I spent a whole Sunday afternoon making these Mini Pops inspired sounds. Tell us in the comments if you want a tutorial on how to recreate them on the Syntact. If you're a patron, you can already download these as presets, along with all the drum pattern sheets of course. Idiotech by Radiohead The Bells by Jeff Mills Don't lose my number by, uh, okay. Crystal by Aphex Twin. And no, this is not the Aphex Twin song we mentioned in the intro.
The Syntact operates in stereo. You can pan all sounds left and right. The digital reverb and delay are stereo as well. These are send effects, meaning you can't have different reverb or delay settings for each track. You adjust them globally and then decide how much of the effect you want on each track. Here's something the Digitac doesn't have. An analog effects block with a multi-mode filter and an overdrive. This whole block is a single insert effect and here you can decide which tracks you want to throw into the pot. Notice that the analog effects block is also stereo and that you can even send the reverb, delay as well as the external inputs into it. Let's see what it will do to a drum machine like the RD6. You can also add reverb and delay to the external inputs. In every project there are 8 banks with 16 patterns each. So 128 per project. And you can have 128 projects, so there's plenty of space. Patterns can be 64 steps long, 4 pages. When adding steps, the pattern is always automatically unrolled. That's a good thing most of the time, since you already have something to work with instead of silence, but it can be annoying when you just want a blank page instead. The electron sequencer is pretty much the gold standard. There's little you can't do with it. It supports micro-timing, sub-steps or retrigs. You can even have velocity ramps in the retrigs. And I'm happy to report that electron finally changed the default retrig length to a 16th note. Makes absolute sense, that's what you need most of the time. Electron, please also make this the default on the Digitact, model cycles and model samples. That would be wonderful. Of course there's automation, or parameter locking. By using sound locks, you can even put different preset sounds onto the steps of a single track. There's probability and iteration dependence, fill. You can have individual track lengths, polymeter, and even individual tempo multipliers per track for polyrhythms. Swing is only available for the whole pattern though, not per track. There's a metronome, live recording is possible, quantized or unquantized, and you can record multiple instruments at the same time, which allows finger drumming. You can also connect a MIDI controller, that will make sequencing the synth machines much more comfortable. Just press a key on the keyboard instead of scrolling through note values. And here's a big change from the Digitact. The Syntact has a dedicated FX sequencer track. Any steps you place here will trigger the filter and amp envelopes and the LFOs of the analog FX block. You can use this for rhythmic sidechain-like effects. But the FX track also allows you to lock FX parameters like reverb decay or delay time. You even get two dedicated LFOs for the FX parameters. Unlike the Digitact though, the Syntact doesn't have any dedicated MIDI tracks. So, to be able to send MIDI, you have to sacrifice any of the digital or analog tracks by assigning them a MIDI machine. This machine can send MIDI data through the MIDI output to other devices. You get 8 assignable MIDI CCs, 1 LFO and a polyphony of up to 4 notes. Just like its siblings Digitact and Digitone, the Syntact has an incredible amount of features that make your life easier. You can clear, copy and paste almost everything. Single steps or multiple steps including their parameter locks, patterns, track sound settings, track sequencer contents, sequencer pages, parameter pages, and even the text in these input fields. Pressing the encoders down while turning them makes them go faster while holding the function button makes the values jump in larger increments or to certain positions. You can shift the sequencer steps on the current track, which is really good if you want to mix things up or if you again started live recording on the wrong beat. There are a lot more features in this box and it's hard to keep track of all of them, 
So after making a detailed cheat sheet for the Digitact, of course we also made one for the Syntact. Get them both on our Patreon. The bad news is, there is no song mode. You can chain patterns, but these chains aren't saved. But at least the Syntact responds to program changes. So you could sequence the patterns from another device that can send program change messages via MIDI. So let's look at some useful performance features. You can use function and yes to quickly save the pattern to a temporary save slot. After a failed experiment, or intentionally messing everything up, however you might want to call it, you can instantly restore the pattern by pressing function and no. With control all, you can change a parameter across all tracks. Excellent for the aforementioned messing up of things. Your results may vary though. Every machine has different parameters on these 8 slots, and unfortunately, it's a bit too easy to accidentally detune any of the 12 tracks. There are two mute modes. Green means global mutes, these are active on every pattern. And purple means pattern mutes, these are only active on the current pattern. You can also quick mute tracks by holding function and pressing the track. Quick Mute even remembers which mute mode you were last in. On the Syntact, we get an interesting new performance feature called Trick Modifiers. Outside of grid or step recording mode, the last four steps can trigger the current track, but with modifiers. You can change what these do. They can perform retrigs, trigger different velocities, or modify a parameter of your choice, like decay. Your performance on these can be live recorded onto the sequencer. Nice! Setting Trig to Off gives you another mode in which you have to hold a modifier and then press the tracks you want to trigger. This allows you to trigger multiple tracks at once and also mix different retrig rates. Just like on the Digitact, you can activate a keyboard mode, in which you can use the step keys to play the current track chromatically. But on the Syntact, you now also have the option to change the scale and root note. And you can fold the keyboard, meaning all unused notes disappear, which makes everything more compact and gives you a lot more reach on those 16 keys. These keyboard settings are saved per pattern. There's seamless pattern copy, meaning you can create a copy of the current pattern and switch to that copy without interrupting playback. Very useful for building a set of patterns while improvising or jamming. I'm a big fan of electron sequences, but looking at other drum machines, there are things I wish would be more straightforward. For example, there are no accents, only velocities, which are tedious to program. To me the best of both worlds is the way Roland did it in the TR6S. Here you can turn any step into a weak beat, an unaccented step, which will lower its velocity. In addition to that, you have a global accent whose intensity you can control. The individual and global accents add up, giving you a total of 4 possible levels. If you still need more, you can go in and edit the step velocity. And that's what I'm missing from the electron machines. A fast way of changing the step intensities to set levels, while at the same time being able to actually see what's going on. But the biggest workflow problem on the Syntact, and the Digitact and Digitone for that matter, is that there's no way to easily copy the track settings. Not the sequencer contents, but all the sound settings from one pattern to another. For example, let's assume I have a song with 16 different patterns, all made with the same track sounds. If I now make adjustments to these sounds, for example if I change the kick, tweak the hi-hat, reduce the reverb and so on, these changes are only made in this single pattern. All the other patterns still have the old sound. On the bigger electron machines, you don't have this problem, because the patterns share so-called kits. And if you make changes to a kit, this affects every pattern that uses this kit. But here, I have no good way of propagating my changes to the other 15 patterns. I wish there was a single command to copy and paste the sound settings of all tracks from one pattern to another. In my opinion that's a real problem when working with these machines. 
Fine-tuning your sound design after you've created all the patterns is a real chore. There is a workaround though, which I'll show you in an upcoming video, along with a few other hacks, some of which also work on the Digitact and the Digitone. You won't want to miss that, so be sure to click the subscribe button. If you change the machine on a track, its settings are lost. It would be great if the settings were retained, at least until you switch patterns, so you can better compare the different machines. In the sound browser, you can press function and yes to preview one shot of the selected sound. But it would be so much better if you could also hear that sound already applied to the current track. This way, you could judge it in context. Because there are no choke groups, you have to use sound locks to get the open and closed hi-hat to choke each other. The problem is, you can't visually distinguish open hats from closed hats on the sequencer. Yes, you could use parameter locks instead, on the decay for instance. In this example, the open hats would then blink, but as soon as I parameter lock anything else, I lose that visual indicator. And there are open and closed hi-hat machines, so I think sound locks are the way they are meant to be used. It would be awesome to have an indicator of which steps have sound locks on them. Maybe give them a slightly different color, a bit more purple perhaps. I mean, the LED lights are obviously capable of producing more subtle color mixes than those we saw on the Digitact, so maybe it's a good idea to use them a bit more. Speaking of sound locks, they are awesome, but tweaking their sound is just tedious. Let's again take the open and closed hi-hat choking example. The actual track sound is the closed hi-hat. And I've sound locked the open hat onto a few steps. If I want to change the closed hat sound, that's no problem. I can just change the track sound. But if I want to modify the open hat sound, that's not so easy. I can't do it from here. I have to go to a different pattern, load that sound from the sound pool, onto the track, tweak the sound without hearing it in context, then I have to save the track sound as a preset into the sound pool, overwriting the previous one. If I now switch over to the previous pattern, I can finally hear the open hat sound in context. Not exactly a good workflow. I wish you could just open the sound pool and edit a preset on the fly, while hearing the changes in context. If you know a workaround for that, please let me know in the comments. There are a few other things you should be aware of before buying. There are no parameter slides, meaning locked parameters can't go smoothly from one step to the next. You can only have abrupt changes. That includes note pitch, there's no portamento. But watch out for our Syntact workaround video, where we show you a good solution to that problem. There's no polyphony, except in this digital chord machine, which can play chords of up to four notes. But since the sequencer itself is monophonic, you can't actually program four notes. You have to select a chord from a numbered catalog. It would be awesome if there was some kind of chord detection happening with external MIDI controllers, but that's not the case. I hope Electron will continue their tradition and add more features over the coming years. More machines would be the obvious choice. The Syntact could really do with some more digital hi-hat and cymbal choices. There's only one digital hi-hat machine in here, and I'd love to have some alternatives that sound less FM-oriented. Step recording mode seems buggy. It doesn't advance like it does on the Digitact, and sometimes weird stuff starts happening to the pattern. Better stay away from step recording until that's fixed. Then there's sweep arrays. While sweep arrays does indeed sweep arrays, for some reason, it also adds one new step at the very moment you press the button combination. Not really usable. The Digitact also has this quirk. When previewing a step, it doesn't play the programmed retrigs. On second thought, I don't know if that's a bug or just not a feature, but it would sure come in handy. There were some other minor bugs reported, but I'm sure these will soon be taken care of in firmware updates. There's one more thing. After designing an analog clavis sound with an impulse machine and a filter with a high resonance, I noticed on the following day that it sounded completely different. At first I thought this was a bug, but it turns out the Syntac needs time to warm up its analog components. Ooh, fancy new boot up animation.
Over the course of 10 to 15 minutes, as the syntax gets warmer, the sound will gradually change. It's really only noticeable on these kinds of sounds made with a very resonant filter. But since that's very useful to make all kinds of weird noises, it's a shame you have to wait 10 to 15 minutes for them to sound right. We contacted Electron on the matter, and they said they were looking into it to see if this can be corrected via a firmware update. We'll keep you posted in the comments as soon as they get back to us. Regarding temperature, after about an hour of use, the Syntact heats up to 42 degrees Celsius or 107 degrees Fahrenheit on the back side, which might be a little too uncomfortable to put on your lap. And look at these awesome animations. Lovely. The Syntact costs 950 euros or 1000 US dollars, which is a lot of money, but you do get a lot of features for it. The Digitact workflow and the Electron sequencer, analog and digital sounds, different engines, plenty of sound design options, good effects and filters, which you can also apply to external signals. If you're looking for a deep and complex drum machine, if you don't need samples, and you're not detracted by any of the things I said in the room for improvement or bug segments, then I'd say go for it. Some people complain that the Syntact is a Frankenstein's monster made out of features from other Electron machines. Yes, this is basically a digitact with synth voices instead of samples, a dash of the analog heat, and there are machines in here that are very similar or even identical to those on the model cycles and analog rhythm. I personally don't feel that's a negative. To me it feels like a best off. Compared to the model cycles, the syntact is that on steroids, but much more versatile and it gives you a broader palette of sounds beyond FM soundscapes. And compared to the flagship analog rhythm mark II, well, I had one, and I liked it very much, but it died on me with a hardware failure, so I was hesitant to get another one. Since I didn't really use samples on the analog rhythm anyway, I must say I'm pretty happy with the Syntact as a substitute. But a real limitation for me is that it only has one analog cymbal track. If you put a cowbell or a cymbal on there, you can't use the analog hi-hats. In my opinion, Electron should add some more digital hi-hat, cymbal and cowbell alternatives as a substitute. Other than that, I must say the intern and I had a lot of fun programming the sounds on this in the past two weeks, and I like it even better than the Digitact. A big shout out to everyone supporting us on Patreon. Thanks to you, we can keep making these videos. And here's that Aphex Twin song we promised you. <laughs>